What's going on everybody? It's Joe from Total Justice Gaming here. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like what we do, please hit that subscribe button. We try to bring you guys buddy fight videos five days a week. So, moving on with my little deck profile palooza. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Oni Assassins. Oni Assassins debuted in the first set to wide fanfare. They have fallen down the tier list. I believe they're now a 1.5... Uh, according to the majority of the uh, competitive community. They can still hang in there competitively, but they've just been brought down a little bit lower with the advent of the chaos and more new forms of bots and more uh, stuff for Thura. And Oni is just waiting for this in October to get another boost to help them bump them back up to a true Tier 1 deck. Uh, admittedly, I have not played my Oni Assassins in quite a while because I've been really busy with my Abigail stuff. Since Abigail uh, got released and had a new deck, I've been pouring more time into that. So I've unfortunately let my Oni deck go to the wayside. However, with Evolution of Mutation, a new, car, a new card came out and let me restructure my deck a little bit. Uh, we did, I did change enough to where it does warrant a new deck profile. We do have a rule total just to give me at least a quarter of the deck. So at least five to ten cards need to be changed out before we do another profile. Uh, to keep in with some of our older stuff or like one of the other presenters was only changing like two cards and wanted to do a new deck profile. So we had to institute a rule where at least a full tenth of the deck has to be changed before we get another one. So, without further ado, we're going to run down my new version of Oni Assassins. Um, I did make a change. We are going to also look at the sideboard that I chose for it. Uh, as you can see, my buddy is still Red Lady Oni uh, Kuriha. I love her to death. She is one of my favorite Oni Assassin cards. Her artwork is fantastic. Her ability just sets up so many combos. So, she is still the buddy. So, that being said, we're going to start right off with her. We're, of course, going to be running for Lady Kuraha. Uh, hits that number that we always strive for at a 5k, credit to uh, 1k defense. All the Oni Assassins have, are a little bit weak in the butt, save for a few here and there. But they come out enough to where that doesn't matter. Uh, her call cost is a gauge. Uh, she's got the ability when it enters the field, I can put a card from Ambush that's not Lady Kuriha from the drop zone into my hand. Then if Kuriha herself enters the field via Ambush, I can put something into her soul. Uh, she sets up a lot of combos. I get the buddy gift off of her, which I love to death. Uh, and I, she overall, she is my favorite Oni Assassin, so there was no way she was never not going to be my buddy. Next up down the road, we are running... Three Rashomons, uh, uh, six two one, still hitting those numbers we're looking for. Uh, we call costs. We look at the top three, put one among the three that we look at into the card soul. The rest into my drop zone and pay gauge. He also has moving soul guard, so he can stick around. Unlike the rest of the the other majority of the oni with soul guard, which is much appreciated because he can guard your center. Uh, with Soul Guard, you can put anything with Ambush and then just profit off of that um, with him. Uh, we're running him at a 3 of. Running down to the size zeros, I see that this is a uh, buddy of a lot of people, and I understand why. Uh, this is Lesser Fiend Amano Jaku. Uh, at a size zero, he's okay. He's a 2 1 1. The real reason why we're putting him in here is because when he has ambush, uh, you draw a card. And I see a lot of people him running as the buddy, so they can buddy call him off the ambush to both gain a life and draw a card. That's great utility. I just want a different way. So we are running him at a 4 of because being able to just come into play and draw a card for free, um, absolutely wonderful. Next up, we are running Fiend of the Gaze, Ao. Uh, Ao is almost one of the linchpin cards of the deck. Uh, at a 2 1 1, he's not very helpful. He does have that 2 crit, which is okay, but his stats are pitiful. However, he's the linchpin in the fact that when he enters the field, I can choose an only assassin, uh, choose an only assassin in the field. I uh, look at the top three cards, put one of them into that uh, unit. And um, 
the rest of my cards go not into the drop zone, but back into the bottom of the deck in any order. He also has Ambush, so that means he can start comboing via coming out of somebody's soul, then targeting and putting something back into that soul, or adding to his own soul. Uh, the possibilities with him are just really, really endless. So, one of the new cards I added into the deck, the rest are just number changes, but this is a true addition to the deck, uh, is Yami Gitsune, I... Uh, Hidden in Garments. Uh, he's a dual world, size 1. He's Darkness Dragon World and Katana World. He is not an Oni Assassin, but his effect warrants him being in the deck for what it does. Uh, he's a 5k, which is good at a 1. Uh, 2 crit, uh, 1 defense, which is not unusual because he is a Skull Warrior, so their defense is just as weak as the Oni Assassins. His call cost is pay gauge, pay a life. When a monster or item on your field uh, deals damage to your opponent, you may destroy that card. If you do, gain a life and draw a card. So why he's so good is because if an Oni Assassin can damage them, they can blow themselves up, the soul goes to the discard, you get whatever's in the soul via ambush, you get a life and you draw a card. That's static for as long as he's on the field, so that sets up like ridiculous hand advantage, good life advantage, uh, able to cause a lot of interactions, so I had to run him at a 3 of. Uh, I'm only testing him at a 3 of right now. I may even bump him up to a 4. Next up, we're running a lad from Kibi. A uh, lad from Kibi is an 8k, credit 2, 4k, uh, size 3 monster. I can put uh, call cost is. Put two cards from my hand face down into soul and pay two gauge. This is a little hefty, but the reason why he's so good and I put him in at three of in the deck is because he has double attack and soul guard. So he can trigger Yamagitsune and lets me get alive just for blowing him up at the cost of decreasing his soul, but his soul is going to be filled up with ambush. So regardless, uh, it's really, really well done. Uh, he interacts with the rest of the decks very well. So regardless if you're sacking him by Yamagitsune or some other ability that lets you destroy him, he comes back uh, still with soul, and the soul that went to the discard pile will hopefully trigger an ambush effect. Uh, at a 4k, he can go down pretty easily, but the fact that he has double attack and hits for 8k warrants him being at a 3 of, because if I don't get Rashomon or don't have a suitable center, he can be that suitable center Especially because he already has two soul in there. Next up, we got Four's uh, buddy. Um, Oni Boss Kitabuki. Uh, 8 to 5. Call cost is pay 2 gauge. When this card enters the field, destroy a monster on your opponent's uh, field. Then if this card is enters the field by ambush, deal damage equal to the size of the monster that's destroyed. Uh, he also has double attack, so he can burn for potentially three, uh, hit for two, uh, hit for another four. So he can hit big numbers. It's very easy to bring him out. We get a lot of soul in the deck. Again, I have to draw attention back to Yamagitsune. Uh, so you'll blow up a monster, burn them, uh, gain a life, draw a card. Uh, all sorts of interactions. I mean, the deck is one big interaction of itself, and I went over this very, very thoroughly in the last deck profile. So I am trying to move a little bit faster. We are running him at a 3 of. Next up for impacts, we are running three copies of Eerie Wailing. I bumped this up from 2 to 3 because it's really, really needed. Uh, it's cast cost is pay gauge, and I choose one of the two following. Choose an Oni Assassin in your field. Put two cards from the deck face down into its soul, or counter put all souls from a card from all cards on the field into the drop zone. So this can trigger mash, mass ambush as well as uh, take away the soul from all cards on the opposing field as well, or let you immediately set up for a turn on the opponent's turn um, by ambush by stocking whatever you need into the soul of a card that's already on the field. Uh, again, I only had this at a 2. That was my mistake. I really should have been running at a 3 the entire time. So I did bump it up to a 3 of. Moving on to weapons. We're running one copy of Ninja Blade Chiruzuka. Uh, this is something that I, as soon as I saw what Oni Assassins did originally, again, I'll try and keep this brief. I saw what Oni Assassins did. I saw what this one did. And this was a natural inclusion for me. Um... 
We are running the set of one of right now. I do have a second one on the sideboard, which we'll go over later. Uh, at a 2-2, two -two, it doesn't seem that great, but when you count that you can blow up a monster, causing Gambush to happen, and make this a 7-2, it causes an additional attack, even if you have three monsters on the board. So we're running this right now at a 1-0. Following that, we're running three copies of Dark Arm Soaring Blade. Its uh, equip cost is pay gauge. All only assassins get a power bonus of plus 1k. Uh, when a monster in the field is entered by ambush, I can pay gauge uh, and destroy a monster in the opponent's field. So we're running this out of three of because it does, he uh, does help facilitate uh, out of combat kills. Uh, for the simple cost of pain engage, and it does give a power bonus to all my Oni Assassins. Moving right along, uh, we are going to be running four uh, House of Assassins Oni Convoy. This is the set spell. Uh, its act skill is put a card from my hand face down into the soul of an Oni Assassin on my field. If I do draw a card, so it just lets me... Uh, put what I need into the field out of play if something's already in there, like Rashomon or uh, Lad from Kibi. It lets me continue and build its soul for more effects while it let me refill my hand. So it's really just another uh, way to filter through the deck very, very quickly. We definitely need that because we have to get pieces very quickly, and that is accomplished, helped accomplished by this card. Uh, we are, of course, running four copies of Snake Gaze. That's become very important in the meta because we need to be able to rest stuff like bots, Athora. Um, because it's not uh, size limited, we can even rest uh, the Gear Gods. Uh, pretty much anything we need for just a life. So we are running four of it to help make sure that we can stay competitive in a me such an aggressive meta. Uh, likewise, for staying aggressive and triggering combos, we are now running four copies of Sneak Attack. I previously only had this at three. I decided to bump it up more to make the deck more aggressive without a turn kills. It helps facilitate and counter a lot of uh, coming to play effects, which we're starting to see a bit more of a emergence of. So now we're seeing uh, four Sneak Attacks in the deck. Um, this lets me also start triggering other ambushes because it does require me to remove a soul from a card that's in play in order to use it. So it helps out. It causes combos. We are running three copies of Midnight Bodyguard. I brought this from a four of down to a three of to be able to bump sneak attack up to a three of. Um, this is our shield. Uh, I can only play this during, uh, if I have an attack, and if I have an only assassin on the field, uh, nullify the attack, then you may put a soul from a card on your field into the drop zone. If I do, uh, put the top card of my deck into the gauge and gain a life, so I can nullify attack, trigger an ambush, gain a, uh, gain a gauge, and gain a life. Uh, very, very good, probably one of the most... Versatile, eh, not versatile, robust shields I've seen in quite a while. Because this lets us do quite a bit in this deck. Uh, moving right along, uh, we are running three under the table. Uh, under the table is put two cards from your deck into your gauge uh, and gain one life. Uh, when this uh, card is face down uh, in the... So I'm going to have to read it. Sorry, guys. Uh, when this face-down card is put is put from a soul of an Oni Assassin on your field into the drop zone, gauge 3. So, uh, if I play it outright, I get to uh, gain 2 and um, gain a life. If it's from the soul uh, and triggered via anything, it lets me gauge 3, which helps fuel quite a bit because this is a more soul-heavy deck than what I usually run. Coming up next, uh, we bumped this up to a 4 of. This was only played at a 3. I did trade one of the guys uh, for it. Uh, I apologize for the glare. This one is really foiled out. Wow. Now that I look at this on camera. Um, this is Hiding Oni. Its cast cost is put a soul from a monster on your field uh, into play into the drop zone. So just cause an ambush in order to play this card. 
Uh, put the top card of your deck into your gauge and draw two cards. You may only cast Hiding only once per turn. <clears throat> so this triggers uh, anything that has Ambush just to draw it, thus facilitating potentially more monsters and more attacks. Um, and draws me two cards and lets me gain a gauge. Uh, for Heralds, this is one of the best cards in the game. I'm inclined to agree in terms of draw spells. Uh, so we are now playing it at a 4 of. Another addition that I did not have that 4 did is uh, Hades Fall. I was just trying to see how the deck would run without it. It does run fine, but if you want to run some oomph, get rid of a, a, a card out of combat... Um, on, and it's a set spell on top of that, so you can just sit there and bide your time and wait for the most appropriate target to trigger it. Uh, Hades Fall is going to get the job done. Uh, it's pay a gauge and choose a card from your deck and put it into the soul of this card. Uh, face down and shuffle your deck. Uh, when a monster enters the field on your, monster enters on your opponent's field, you may put, uh, all souls from this card. Yeah. Party again. Uh, when a monster enters your opponent's field, you may put all souls from this card into your drop zone. If you do, put a card that is in. If a card is put into your drop zone and has the same size monster as your field, destroy that monster and deal two damage to the opponent. So it burns them. Uh, it blows up a monster, and it lets us pick and choose because there's no size limit on it. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, again, I can run with it or without it. That's a player preference and my choice. But uh, I want to be as competitive as possible. So we're running this at least at a two of. Uh, sideboard. Running one extra copy of Ninja Blade Chorizuki. We were running one extra copy of uh, Hades Fall. Um, we can dump Hiding Oni down to a two of if we need more out of combat kill. For a Chirizuke, uh, we can uh, just drop a Soaring Blade down to a two of and run a two two. Uh, two Apex Predator in case we need to drop Hiding Assassin for something else, for or Hades Fall for something else. Uh, destroy a size one on your opponent's field. Uh, when this is facing down the soul to an enemy, I can destroy a size 2. Uh, it's also counter speed, so I can counter and kill a size 1. If it comes out by a, uh, comes out of the soul, I can kill a size 2. So it just sets up for uh, co uh, combat phase kills. Uh, to deal with soul monsters that are heavy in soul, uh, we can replace Yamagitsune with... Dustfiend Yagyo, uh, when he enters the field, choose a monster uh, on your opponent's field. Put a soul from the chosen monster into the drop zone. Then if uh, he comes out, uh, out of the soul, then if he comes to play via ambush, I can put an additional soul into the drop zone. So we're running him against soul heavy decks, so we can replace Yamagitsune with him to just ensure that their soul is drained much quicker than they need it to be. Uh, and then the final two, uh, or final three cards, excuse me, is Half Eaten Kid Yase, um, and also it's a size zero. Uh, sorry guys, I forgot to talk about Yagyu stats. It's a uh, size one, five, one, one. So meaning it hits that 5k number we need. Uh, Kid Yase, it's a size zero, so it's a two, one, one. Uh, when it enters the field via ambush, choose an item on your opponent's field. You may pay gauge. If you do, destroy the chosen card. Uh, so just when it enters play, I can pay a gauge and blow up an item. That's actually very relevant these days because we're getting a lot, seeing items play a much bigger role than what they used to. Uh, items have always been big, but no so much more now than ever, especially with... Um, the Hero World set coming out soon. Uh, we're going to need as much item destruction as possible. Uh, a lot of Dragon World stuff can be now be destroyed. Um, so uh, if we're going up against a very item uh, emphasized deck, then we're going to swap out Yamagitsune into Kid Yase. 
And that's the deck, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I will get around to be playing with this more often. I really do feel bad. Uh, I haven't been giving it the attention it deserves. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, catch us next time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.